Thank you, President Alice. Um, what an exciting day to be here. Um, I feel privileged to be able to introduce our guest speaker today, Joe Reeves. I met him several years ago um, through an opportunity where we were both kind of in a giving position. I had donated an auction item for a bourbon tasting at our home um, to benefit Zoom Group. And Joe was the lucky bidder, and I had the opportunity to meet him at the first, for the first time, really, in my home with 20 of his closest friends. Um, we immediately struck it off, and our relationship has ensued since then. Um, what I love about Joe, and, and, I, and I think you hate to use, but since President Alice has already set the standard and we're using cliches, I'm going to remind you of the starfish sto story and the boy who was on the beach and threw a starfish back one by one. And a gentleman approached and says, well, why in the world would you do that? Who are you going to make a difference for? And of course, as the old rest of the story goes, the response was, well, I made a difference to that starfish. And that's what I love about Joe. He's made, an, you know, he, he, he's been 20 years, I guess I should say over two decades, as um, founder and managing partner of Argy Financial. He employs over 100 people in the city of Louisville and throughout our community at other branch offices and manages over a billion dollars of assets. He started this day one. He built it, he took action, and he moved us forward and he continues to give. He looks for ways in our community to collaborate and take action. And so he's here today with us to talk about how he's giving back to our community to reduce crime and to make a difference for that one special person. Please join me in welcoming Joe Reeves. As Angela was talking, I wasn't quite sure who she was talking about. So, uh, but I want to start off with a little story that um, about six weeks ago really moved me. Um, as we were, were planning this upcoming boxing event, I had the opportunity to, to meet a gentleman that uh, I had long um, looked up to. And uh, I was listening to him, and he was telling the story about the time he was eight years old. And he and his cousins were walking to the boys' club, three miles, right? So one, first, any of us think about if we have to walk over three blocks, right? We're looking for Uber and trying to figure out what we're going to do. But th these, these kids are working, walking three miles to the boys' club, and they and they get there and. He tells about his cousins who um, walked on in, and here's this eight-year-old boy, and he didn't know what to do. And this elderly lady looks down at him and says, son, are you a member? And he said, you know, for that moment, I wasn't sure what member was. So I didn't know if that was a good thing or a bad thing. Was I supposed to say yes or no? So I just sat there. She goes, no, do you have a card? He shook his head, said, no, ma'am, I, I, don't, I don't have a card. And she said, so son, where do you live? And he told her, and uh, she goes, well, you know, that, that, that's three miles away. How did you get here? Well, I walked. And she said, so if you have to, if you can't come in, what are you going to do? And he said, I'm going to walk home. And she said, by yourself? Well, yeah. And he said, and, and, and he says it so eloquently, this elderly, large white woman, right? turns around, reaches into her brassiere, and pulls out a quarter. And he handed, she handed the quarter to him, 
so that he could go into the boys club that day. Now, this man calls it the hot quarter because when he received it, it was rather warm. <laughs> but that one event, that one token of, of, of charity, of investing in one person, one quarter, one hot quarter, he says potentially created a four-time heavyweight champion of the world. Because he said if I had not gotten to go in, he said I would have had three miles to walk back ashamed, right? I would have never gone back to that place again because of how I felt that day, not being able to get in, not being a part. And so that lady, she probably never even knew the difference that she made, but she made a difference in one man's life that made a difference in thousands of lives, right, Ac across. And so obviously that gentleman is here today, and uh, I told him when we were walking in, I said, Champ, I hope you don't mind. I borrowed one of your stories to start this thing off. And uh, But that night when I heard that, it... <sighs> It was, it expressed to me why I do what I do, right? And, 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 and I'm not, there are people in this room who do 10 times more than I could ever dream of doing. So th this, is, this, this talk today is not about me. This talk today is about how do we as a society make a difference, right? And it doesn't have to be this grandiose, right? It doesn't have to be this grandiose thing. It can be one hot quarter. And one child, or one person, or one man, or one woman. And why this is important to me is, I, I, went, on a, I went on a mission trip about three years ago with my senior and high school daughter. And we went to the Dominican Republic, and I'd never been on a, a, a trip like this, and, and, and I was really energized about, I'm gonna go there and I'm gonna help people and we're gonna build stuff and you know, it's gonna be this, I'm gonna just give. And I got there and about two days into the trip, I had this aha moment that I wasn't meant that trip was not about me going to help people. That trip was about my heart changing of what I was supposed to do in this world, right? And, and, and when you start thinking about that, and, and, and I, I talk about it or I think about it when my employees, and one of our, one of our core values is serving others. Right? I believe as an organization, as a, as a society, as human beings, we're built to serve others, right? We're not built to be self-serving. We, we may tend to think we are sometimes, but the reality of it is when we are serving others, we are usually at our best, whether it's in society, whether it's in community. And, and so when I got back from that trip, my wife and I sat down and, and, and I said, you know what, I really want to figure out what I feel like we're called to do. How can we make a difference? It may not be grand, but it, we can make a difference. And I don't think it has to be in the Dominican Republic. I believe it can be right here in our own backyard. And so we kind of set on this journey to, to be more um, aware of opportunities and and I, I had a gentleman uh, who I had been friends with in business, uh, Mr. James Dixon, that uh, I, I guess I, I may have been acting a little bit like a mentor, uh, a, a little brother. He was kind of like a little brother to me. And uh, what, I, what I saw in him was his heart was bigger than anything that I had ever seen, right? And he, he didn't even have a lot of reasons at the time 
to just be generous, right? I mean, life was tough for him. And, and one day we were eating lunch and uh, he, he, he basically invited me over to his house and I went to his house and I heard this, I heard this noise coming from, uh, coming from a part of the house. And I was like, what, what is going on in there? He's like, come here. And I walk in and James had created a makeshift boxing gym in his garage, right? And there were, there were five or six young men that were working out in this garage. And I was like, James, how long has this been going on? He goes, a couple years. I'm like, how often? Every day. They come from home from school and here's where they come. And, and so anyway, I don't want to, but I'm like, unbelievable. This man is opening up his house to these young youth. And so I just pondered on that. And, and it was probably, I don't know, four or five months later, we were, we were meeting again and, and he had been working out of town. He's like, oh, I just can't travel anymore. I've got, I've got my family. Uh, James and I both have autistic uh, children that are very special to us and we know how important it is to be there for them. And he's like, I just can't travel anymore. I've got to figure out what to do here in town. And I was like, James, in, in my experience, finding your passion is where you need to be. And he goes, I go, what do you love to do? And he goes, you're going to laugh at me when I tell you this. And I go, well, no, I won't, but let me hear it. And he goes, I want to help kids. I said, how do you want to help kids? He goes, I'm a good boxing coach. He said, I'm a good mentor. He said, I, I love kids. And I, I know that those four or five guys, remember that you saw in my gym, I made a difference in their life. I do every day. They look at me as their dad. And he said, I got more of that. We can do more of that. And I said, okay, what do we need to do? He goes, what do you mean? I go, well, let's make it happen. What do we need first? He goes, well, we need a place. My gym's and my garage isn't big enough. I go, okay, I got that. So let's find a place. Where does that place need to be? He goes, it needs to be, it needs to be in the heart of the city. It needs to be where the kids need us the most. I'll go, okay, let's start looking. And so that's how the, the, the gym that we started, Louisville TKO, started, right? And to this day, and to this day, we're down on East Breckenridge, 104 East Breckenridge Street, down in Smoketown area, and we have 30 to 40 to 50 kids a day that come through there, and about 130 different kids a week that come into that gym. And we have a program. Uh, we, we know that the majority of people that box are not going to make a living at it. It's like the kids that play baseball or basketball that have visions of being in the NBA. It's not, for most of them, going to happen. But the drive to do it is where the learning comes, right? But there's one piece that, that a lot of times, especially student athletes, good student athletes, get left behind in academics. So we said, you know, our gym is going to be different. It's not just going to be a gym. It's going to be a, I like a community center. And there's going to be rules, right? And there's going to be expectations. Uh, we started a, uh, a program called Books Before Hooks, all right? You come in and the first thing on the right that you see when you walk into the gym is the computer lab, study hall. Kids come in. We have tutors, volunteers who volunteer their time to... To, uh, to, to help. Uh, you gotta maintain a 2.5 grade point average to be on the boxing team, right? Uh, so there's, there's accountability. And, and it's just been amazing to watch, right? And, and for me, my, my aha moment was I probably can't make a difference as much in one individual kid's life, but if I can make a difference in James's life, right? 
if I can help him be his best, he can touch way more kids than I can, right? And, 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 and that's where when, when, I, when, I, when I brought things back to the hot quarter, right? That, that's, how, that's how I look at things is I don't have to hit a home run. What I've got to do is advance towards the goal, right? Another core value that I have is that perfection is never the goal. Constant improvement is the goal, right? Never settling to be where I am, but settling where I know that I can go and how's that journey, right? And we teach the kids that too, right? The journey is where the learning happens, right? You're going to get knocked down. It's not whether you get knocked down. James is, I'm probably stealing some of his thunder. But it's how you get up and what you do when you do get up, right? A couple of, couple of quick uh, statistics, all right? We've all seen the news, right? The homicides in our area are at an all-time high. Now, in defense of our city, right, it's everywhere, right? It is in every urban city, right? It is, and this morning um, had, we had a press conference for the upcoming coming boxing, and one of, the, one of the people we're talking about that the key to all of this is hope. If people don't have hope, they have no reason to do better. Right? If there is no hope, whether you shoot somebody or don't, it doesn't matter. Right? So creating programs, and we just have one of the programs. I mean, there, there, there are hundreds of programs in this city that are making a difference. Right? And, and moving those statistics. And will they happen overnight? No. But can we improve them? Yes. Right? Can we make them? Can we make them be uh, better? In my experience at the gym, and I'm not down there nearly as much. Or James is it's his world every day. But the difference that I see in the kids that we have coming through there, and I'm not talking about the ones that are even great boxers. Right? These are the ones that need a purpose. Right? that we have one gentleman, just to, just to give you an example, he had to weigh at least 270, maybe 300 pounds when he first came to the gym. 16 years old, obese, mad, right? Angry, angry. And, and, and had probably every right in the world to be angry, right? And he came in and James started working with him and, 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 and I remember, and I was down there one day, and just, I mean, James has rules, right? You pull your pants up, right? You shake hands, you look people in the eye, right? You, you treat everybody with respect. Well, this kid, he was just angry, and I remember James taking him and, 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 and really getting in, his, getting in his grill, you know? And he said, you got a choice, but I'm here. If you choose the right way, I'm going to help you. To this day, this day, I believe he's probably at 185, 190. Is that fair? Looks great. Can can box four rounds, right? Making grades. I mean, those are the types of things, and and that's one hot quarter, right? That's one difference that you make with that one person. And that changes. And so think about what that change does to our society if we, if, we exp it, if we expand on that. That person would have medically would have been unfit, right? And all of these, he would, not have, he would not have been a productive member of society. Today he will be. And for me, that, those are the small victories. And... And my parting of what, what I think or what I would ask of this audience. 
and, and I'm not making assumptions that this isn't going on, but I'm just, here, here's what I, I would say is, the smallest things make a difference, especially in people's lives who don't have what we have, right? It, it, the small things make a difference. So don't, don't not do them because you think it's not gonna have a, an exponential effect. Also, don't do them because you're looking for an immediate response or an immediate improvement. The lady who gave Evander that quarter didn't do it because she was going to try to make the next heavyweight champion of the world. She did it because she didn't want him to feel rejected, dejected, right, embarrassed, and it made a difference. And in the organizations that you're in, if you, if, you, if you like sports, if you like boxing, there's always something to do with TKO, right? But if it's not your cup of tea, there's a lot of organizations around the city that need all of our help, right? And whether it's sponsoring, you know, whether it's financial, uh, volunteering, advocating, right? Um, and the last thing is, we, we have Saturday night, um, we have a boxing, championship boxing event coming up in Louisville, Kentucky. It's the first time in 14 years that we've had championship boxing back in Louisville. Um, we have partnered with Evander Holyfield and Sal to, to bring this back to our, our great community. Um, come out see what it's all about, right? It's, it'll be a great night. It, it'll be a great night. But it, 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 like I said, even if boxing isn't your thing, find the place where you can give a hot quarter, right? And I promise you it does make a difference. So I want to uh, introduce uh, my partner, co-founder of Louisville TKO, a, a, a man that I have unbelievable respect for because no matter what Face, what challenges he's face. Every day he gets up, he's thankful, he's grateful, he's got a smile on his face. And, you know, he probably doesn't know this, but I, I look up to you for what you do every day, James. And uh, got a little, little video I want to play for you guys before I introduce, bring him up. A lot of these kids in the inner city are deprived. You got moms that's working two jobs, kids are spending time idle, and that's how they get up into the streets. We need to put more resources in the inner city for these kids to do. If you don't want them robbing and getting on drugs and doing bad things, you gotta have something productive for them to do. You gotta have them somewhere to go. is James Dixon with Louisville TKO Boxing. I'm the coach slash mentor, trainer, father figure to a lot of these young men and women. Man, you like my son? Well, how you mad? Where you been? You're we went from having five kids in a two and a half car garage to 126 kids. A lot of guys come in here and they think, well, I'm a tough guy, I can fight, or I'm a strong guy, or I'll run marathons. You have to take all three of those and channel them to one guy or female. That's what makes a boxer. It's a will over the matter, you know. And when you watch a young kid become a man in this game and then in life, it's, it's huge, it's powerful. And I think that's what life's all about. I, I know that's what life's all about. I'd like to introduce Coach James Dixon.
You got my mic on? Uh, I can't stand in front of the podium. I like to uh, move around. I'm very uh, honored, humbled to be here in front of you folks today. Uh, very blessed that uh, I had a path that God sent me down and to, be, uh, to meet Mr. Joe Reeves. Uh, he is my brother. I love him. Uh, the compassion that he's shown for me, I wouldn't be here today and we wouldn't have helped um, a lot of kids. We're truly saving lives. I can tell you stories of kids that came into my program two years ago that if I, I told them that if they leave, within two months they would be dead or in prison. It's happened twice on both sides. We're doing serious business. And I pray uh, boxing is just a small piece of it. Uh, boxing is a sweet science uh, sport that I love and adore because nothing teaches you more about life than boxing. One thing about life, no matter how much education you have, no matter what, everyone in here goes through something in life. You're gonna have ups and you're gonna have downs, no matter who you are. What we try to do at TKO is give them a work ethic and a spiritual belief to just stay right here even all the time when times are good or whether they're bad. A lot of the kids that come to TKO, they're not going to go to college. But if we can put them in vocational schools, uh, just give them a work ethic. Like Joe said, a lot of them's not going to make the Olympic team or be pro fighters, but they can be world-class citizens. That's what we're doing. We're building historical data. We're working with Jefferson County Public Schools. I work with Jeff Jefferson County Juvenile Courts. That young man that we met came out of juvenile courts. Uh, come out of Park Hill, very tough, gang-infected area. I'm so proud to say that with all the trophies and the tournaments that we win, I'm more proud that this young man is going to be the first in his family to go to college next year. So if we can continue to give those warm quarters and change lives. But uh, it, takes, it takes everyone in this room. We turn on the TV every day. We see the violence. And I know, I know you guys want to help. And like Joe said, there's a lot of organizations in this town that are doing good things. But I assure you that uh, the, the kids in Louisville TKO, I, I welcome any one of you in the evenings to come down to the gym and see what we're doing. A lot of these kids that come in our gym, they have no work ethic. It's the blind leading the blind. They're going to school. The schools are so crowded. A lot of these kids are getting left behind. With our No Hooks Before Books program, we've teamed up with Jefferson County Public Schools. A lot of the kids that come to our gym, uh, their parents have to come in one time, get sign a waiver for them, but when, when they do, we, we sign everything. We basically tell them that I'm gonna monitor your kids while you're working or whatever you're doing to make sure that they get the grades. That's the trade-off to come to TKO. Me and Joe is gonna make sure you get to tournaments, get what you need, get educations, get prepped for SAT tests. Your, your goal, what you have to do for me is you gotta stay out of trouble in school, you gotta be respectful, you gotta pull your pants up, and you got to stay out of trouble. When you do those things, we're gonna look after and make sure that you get to college. We're gonna make sure that you're prepped because most of the kids where they come from if, if their grades are there, if their GPA is high enough, they can get scholarships and grants to go off to college. I think we have two or three that's going to be going off this year. Uh, I'm more proud of that, of course, than, than the boxing, but that, that's a big part of it because of the work that's involved with boxing. Uh, it's very hard work, it's hot, it's demanding, but kids need that because they sit idle at home and then that's where they get into gangs and trouble. So Louisville TKO, Louisville TKO is one outlet, I'm sure, of many here in the city. But they were talking about the areas in town. We're at 104 East Breckenridge Street. That was the largest district of homicides last year. And again, this year it's leading. Those are, those are historical facts. But I appreciate you guys. And if uh, any guys, any, any of you are, are welcome at any time to come by Louisville TKO. 
look at the good work we're doing there. Again, I'm very honored and privileged to stand before you folks today, and thank you for giving me your time. So you guys probably can see what what I saw in James from a passion standpoint and uh, the the heart. And uh, uh, one other thing to to kind of close on is, you know, we're changing kids' lives, but we're also building some pretty good boxers. All right, there, there, there's a, there's a byproduct of that. And uh, one of the things that uh, partnership that we have joined up with is. Uh, Real Deal Boxing, uh, uh, Evander and Sal uh, are uh, teamed up to form Real Deal uh, Boxing, which uh, is a boxing promotional company. Uh, we are fortunate to be their inaugural event this Saturday, and so that's, that's the reason that Evander and Sal are, are here today. Um, but it was great when they came down the last, when they came down to the gym, and they started watching some of the talent and some of the, the guys and girls, right? So we, we've said guys quite a bit, but you'd be amazed that the, uh, the talented uh, ladies that we have at So, and, uh, and, and, and James was, was pretty humble, but his, uh, his son Carlos, um, uh, Vander and Sal signed him uh, last, about six weeks ago, and he will have his pro debut at Freedom Hall this Saturday, which is the same place that Muhammad Ali had his pro debut uh, a few years ago. <laughs> so, we're building champions inside and out of the ring, and we're doing it the right way, um, I, you know, when I was talking to Sal and Evander about the boxing, in my, in my um, brief period in the boxing, it's not, it's not the most, it's probably like a lot of other businesses, it's not nearly as above board as it needs to be, right? But when you find people who do it right and you partner up with them, it doesn't have to be that way, right? And we've made the commitment that, you know, our kids are going to be protected. They're, they're, they're not going to get taken advantage of. Uh, we're going to give them the support that they need, and we're, going to only, we're only going to team up with the most respected people in the business. And so, Evander, Sal, thank you for coming to our city. Thank you for everything that you do. For I know that, uh, I'm sure that this isn't scripted, but there's about five minutes to go, and I think instead of taking questions from me, I'd, I'd like to ask Evander, will you come up and say a couple quick words? I, I'm sure these guys would rather, uh, I put him on the spot. Not a lot of words, just, just a couple. I've already taken your best story. Thank you. I'm, uh, I'm honored, honored to be here. But I, the, big, the big reason me getting into uh, promotion is because what was given to me as a kid. I'm, I'm the youngest of nine in my family. You know, you, I, you don't choose your neighborhood. You don't choose your parents and all that. And, and I happen to be the youngest one. So as a kid, I want to do something good. And so my brothers and sisters would tell me I wasn't going to be nothing like that. So, you know, my mama wouldn't even let me hang out with them. So, you know, and so, so my mama said, my mama, my mama would just tell me things. She said, son, I love you. Like that, you know, they quit already. So I'm like, so, but I, I like my brothers and them because everything they did looked cool. Mama said I couldn't hang out with her. And so my mama sent me to the boys club. So she sent me to the boys club. I found that in this boys club, it was okay because 
Wasn't nobody bigger than me. Because I just, you know, I was six years old. So I got the chance to be people six, seven, eight years old. I can go with 11, 12, and 13. So I got an opportunity to know that I, I wasn't the crybaby that my brothers and sisters were telling me that I was. I, I was the fastest. Matter of fact, I was the strongest and all this, but you know, but my mama told me, you know, my mother taught me things saying, you don't have a temper. Because you know, everybody, when people get mad, they go mess with somebody. And my mama told me, if you're not going to hit that big guy, and you're going to hit that little guy, then you ain't got no temper. If you got a temper, go hit the big guy. You know, he let you know that you ain't have a temper, you know. So if you're not going to hit him, don't hit him. Like that, so, you know, I couldn't pick on nobody like that. So, you know, I, you know so if I couldn't, you know, people tell me that, you know, you don't have what I, what I have, you know, and, you know, I was kind of kind of upset because I thought all kids supposed to know the same thing. Like that, so you, these kids can read. I couldn't read. You know, man, I'm mad because I'm thinking that if we the same age, we supposed to know the same thing. And they were laughing at me. So I didn't want to go to school. And my mama told me, son, if you can read, you can stay home with me. That's the reason why I'm sending you to school, because you can't read. <laughs> and so, you know, I was, I was, and my mama, so my mama said, but who's the fastest in the class? I said, mama, we ain't running. She said, but who's the fastest when y'all go outside? I said, I am. She said, are you bragging about how fast you are? Well, yeah. She said, well, stop talking about how fast you are. They'll stop talking about how smart they are. Like that. So, you know, that's what's the key to things. You, you get back what you dish out. So uh, I'm here. I'm here. And the, and the things that I give is because that lady with that hot water gave me an opportunity to be here. It didn't just change me. It changed my whole family. Because all my brothers and sisters, they kids probably went probably wouldn't even got an opportunity to go to college. I paid for everybody to college. I didn't go to college, but all, all my nieces and nephew, I paid for it. That one quarter changed our life. And so I'm here today, I'm here today. So, so I'm here today to do the same thing in boxing. You know, I'm not, my whole thing is that anything was tough, I like that, but if you told me to punish, to punish me, you know, my mom would tell me to sit down. Sit down. Now, that was a punishment to me. I like running, playing like this. When they tell me to sit down, sit down, boy, just, just sit down. That was my punishment. I couldn't go outside. To look out that window and that sun was out, and I couldn't go outside, man, you know, you, you Something's wrong. So I'm, I'm here to give opportunities because I know opportunity works. Thank you very much.